Hey, friendos, and Larson here. Welcome back to Going and Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to. Doing the show solo today. Uh, we got a lot of talk about, including Edge. You think you know him. Uh, a lot of talk, a lot of speculation about his future may hold now that he's apparently had his last match on his current contract in WWE. Where is he going? What is he going to do? Is he staying in WWE? Is he going to AEW? Is he going home to retire? Is he going to Impact? We don't know, but we'll talk about the latest news and speculation about the Rated R Superstar's future. Also, we've got a SmackDown recap. AEW Collision recap. Of course, we're on the road right now to All In, which is happening. Gosh, it's happening on Saturday already. But speaking of All In, it's the first event in our next Friendo Predictions Challenge. Uh, you can join these Friendo Prediction Challenges by becoming a member over here at the YouTube or uh, a patron over at patreon.com forward slash Steve and Larson. We got Champ Fear and Loathing defending the big blue title this month. We got three events in this latest predictions challenge. We got All In, as mentioned. We got uh, Payback, which I think is September 2nd. And then we got All Out Sunday. Three huge events over the course of seven days determine the next big blue champion, of course. We got uh, myself winning the G1. I can cash that in. And then we got Flannelly Dan with Money in the Bank briefcase. Flannelly Dan could cash in potentially too. Maybe we'll have two cash ins. I don't know. Remains to be seen. Also remains to be seen what's next for Edge. So, following Edge's last contract WB match this Friday on SmackDown against Sheamus and the revelation shortly thereafter that his WB contract extends through the end of September. But a bunch of speculation about what lies ahead for you think you know him, Edge, rated R superstar. So, FIFA Select reported that there are people with an AEW who think there's a pretty decent chance, good chance maybe, that Adam Copeland, Adam Edge, Edgy Adam, could be in all could be all elite before his career is over. Edge obviously has a lot of history with Christian Cage. They were a tag team, WB. Obviously, same with the Hardys. Edge and Christian wrestled the Hardys a bunch of WB. And FTR, because FTR helped him prepare for his return at the Rumble 2020. Fightful reports that those close to Edge stated earlier this year that, quote, the idea of him working in AEW isn't as out there as you would think. So let's kind of, let's get into this a little bit. Uh, I think Edge is what, early 50s or something like that? I think he's early 50s. I could be wrong. Um, in an in interview with uh, inter- ET, could be Entertainment Tonight Canada, um, he stated how it's it's tough for him to prepare for matches. I don't know how much of that is physical, how much of that is mental, combination thereof. I know when Steve and I go play basketball, it takes me 20 minutes to get loose before I my body doesn't hurt when I try to take a jump shot. So I empathize with Edge on that re- in that regard. Um, you know, he he he's dedicated 25 years of his life to wrestling in WWE. Uh, he put his body through a lot for the entertainment of the fans and Primary of the reason he came back is so he can end his career on his own terms, it seemed like. And uh, I, I, if, if he did whoops, if he did wrestle his last match in WWE this Friday on SmackDown, I understand why he wanted to do it without all the pageantry. Because he kind of got that last time. He had the WrestleMania match. He defeated Alberto Del Rio. He had to come out the next night in a Raw and do the, the retirement speech. Maybe this time, if he's done with WWE, he just wants to go out quietly, have one last match in his hometown against a friend of his, someone he really respects, and Sheamus. And then take some time off, evaluate what he wants to do in the future. And and if he wants to do one last run in AEW with his friend Christian, with his friends FTR, with his friends the Hardys. Again, I mean, given how much time he's given to the industry, how much of his body he's given to the industry, um, you know, to, I think he's earned the right to dictate how he leaves said industry. Uh, that being said, uh, I de- I'm guessing if, if he does have a run in AEW, it'll probably be on Collision. That just seems like the show he'd be on. That's what Christian's on. That's where FTR's on. Um, and, uh, you know, Chris- <laughs> Collision, based on the last couple weeks, I haven't seen the ratings for this week yet, uh, could use a bump. Maybe Edge, Adam Copeland, Adam Edge, Edgy Adam, whatever, we wanna, whatever his new name is, um, on Collision, uh, could maybe give the show a little bit of bump in the numbers. Remains to be seen. Uh, but, uh, you know, hey, it'd be cool to see him tag with Christian one more time. Challenge the Hardys. Maybe. Take on FTR. 
Um, and if he has a run in, in, in AEW, I doubt it'll be a long one. Um, and if his contract extends through the end of September, it's not like he's going to show up at all in or all out. We're talking full gear, maybe at the soonest, or he could stick around WWE and, and, and say, all right, mania 40, that'll be my last match. Who knows? Who knows? Um, so it remains to be seen. Um, uh, you know, obviously, there, he has a massive fan base that'll pay attention to whatever he does, and uh, uh, you know, it'll it'll be it'll be huge for whatever company manages to gain or retain his services. Um, it'll be interesting though if 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 he does go to AEW somehow, they can work out a thing where they can use his WWE theme, the Alter Bridge theme. I don't know what the details of WWE's licensing agreement are. Remains to be seen there, or if they can get his old theme when he first debuted. Dun, 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 that one. That'd be neat. That's probably a Jim Johnson song, so WB probably owns that. All right, let's move on to SmackDown. Chris, uh, sorry, Edge was not Christian. Christian has been WB in a while. Edge was on SmackDown. Uh, of course, the show was centered around what could have been, what might be, his final match in WWE. But it was also the first SmackDown we've seen in a long time that was basically without a major storyline beat as it relates to the Bloodline story, or for that matter, no Roman Reigns, no Jimmy Uso, no Jay Uso, no Soul Sokol. We only had a brief interview with Paul Heyman where kind of the point of this is, of his interview was, I don't respond to rumors. Oh, by the way, Jimmy Uso is going to be on the show next week. Um, so it, it's going to be interesting to see so much of SmackDown, so much of its success has seemingly been due to the Bloodline story. And if the Bloodline story is going to take a bit of a backseat for a while, it's going to be interesting to see how SmackDown's numbers fare. Um, you know, obviously, I think this week with the idea that this could be Edge's last match um, and all the video packages, I know they framed it as if, as in this is the 25th anniversary with the company at the same time. There was a career retrospective. There was like three, two or three video packages that were a bunch of superstars saying, thank you, Edge. So it, it seemed like WB is at the least preparing for the eventuality of this could be could be Edge's last appearance uh, on one of their televised programs, even though I think they they said he was going to be on the bump this week. I think that I saw that over the weekend, but then again, my memory is terrible. Um, but again, no bloodline on the show, really, apart from the small the short Paul Heyman interview. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if they kind of give the bloodline story a chance to to take a break a little bit so they could focus on the U.S. title scene, which was kind of another huge focus of SmackDown this week. Uh, this new faction with Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits, where we have Street Profits have their first match as member of this new as members of this new faction. Um, but it seems like, it, it, at least with Street Profits, they're not exactly sure how they're going to adjust their presentation, possibly. They have new gear, but otherwise it was the same entrance. Um... What else happened on SmackDown? Let's see. There was a really fun tag match with EO and B uh, Bailey taking on Bianca and Charlotte. And uh, it seems like Bianca might be have been written off TV for a spell after a backstage attack at the hands of Damage Control. Um, all in all, I mean, they gave the main event a ton of time. So uh, uh, otherwise, uh, let's, just let's just get into it. Show kicked off with Grayson Waller effect. Uh, special guest, Santos Escobar, Rey Mysterio. So he introduces them. They come to the ring. Santos has got a nice suit on, but he also got a knee brace on. And Waller congratulates Ray on winning that U.S. title. And Ray says, it feels great to be U.S. champ once again. And Waller kind of turns his, his attention to Santos. says, man, can you imagine how it felt if you had won the U.S. title? And Ray goes, no, I don't know what you're doing here. We, we foiled Theory's plan. It doesn't matter who has the U.S. title. It matters that it's in the LWO. And Waller continues. He says, Ray stole your opportunity, Santos. And Ray, again, denies it. And Waller says, Santos even beat Ray Mysterio, but when it was his opportunity, uh, Ray took it, stole it, because Ray's not ready to pass the torch yet. And Santos finally says, Waller, shut up, listen to me. The only person I'm angry with is that low-life Austin theory. I gave my blessing. Why? Respect. Of which you have none for my friend and my mentor, Ray Mysterio. I see what you're doing, pal. It ain't going to work. We're family. Now, theory got exactly what he deserved. Once I'm fully healed, he's interrupted by Theory. Before we get to what Theory was out to talk about, you got to think at a certain point, Santa's got to turn heel here. 
Um, you know, even if Santos gave Ray his blessing. There might be a bit of resentment from Santos's part about Ray going in and winning the title. When he when Santos already beat Austin Theory. When he beat Ray Mysterio for an opportunity to get a, a U.S. title shot. See if it happens. Anyways, Santos interrupted by Theory. He walks down the ramp. He says, sorry. I'm sorry. Congratulations, Ray, on becoming a three-time U.S. champion. It's just too bad. It's a great achievement, but where's the Father of the Year award? But what I want to know is who's running this show because what happened last week was a tragedy and you and your damn one leg, saying to Santos, weren't man enough to step in the, up to the greatest U.S. champ. I am the greatest. Uh, and you, you weren't supposed to, oh, sorry, he says, I am the greatest, Ray, and you weren't supposed to be in that match. Now, Adam Pearce needs to come out here and hand me back what is rightfully mine, and that is the U.S. title. Let's go, Adam. Come on. That's mine. So Pearce walks out to the stage and says, hold up. I had a feeling you are going to come out here calling me but no one wants to hear you complaining tonight. Yeah! The L.A. Night music hits. He walks right on past Pierce and stands at the foot of the ramp and just soaks in the cheers, the adulation of the crowd. And he says, let me talk to you. I didn't just come out here and listen to Theory say uh, he was the greatest U.S. champ of all time, did I? Because if I recall, you're the guy that once in three months defended your title. And what did you do? You fumbled the damn ball. One second, I got an idea for you. While he's out here talking about what he deserves, Ray, look, congratulations to you. I don't care who's champion. Sometime or another, it's coming with me. Theory, you talk about being the greatest U.S. champ. I haven't tasted that gold yet, but what I did is I went through 24 other men at SummerSlam, and it ain't going to be a problem to go through you. So, what I see is that you're dressed to fight. I'm dressed to fight. So let me throw a little something your way. I see Ray Mysterio there standing with that U.S. title, and I think to myself, what if it was a shot for that U.S. title? Austin Theory versus L.A. Knight. Yeah. So Pierce says, all right, great idea. Match is official and it's going to happen next. Of course, what does L.A. Knight say? Yeah. Which means that he continues talking to Theory, which means that cross-eyed halfwit has a single, single first-class ticket to a BFT with everybody saying L.A. Knight. What does he say next? Of course, yeah. So then we get Austin Theory versus L.A. Knight. And uh, damn Miz got between LA Knight and that US title. So, he comes Miz comes ringside before the match starts. Joins commentary. He's talking on commentary talking a bunch of crap about LA Knight, of course. Um, and then down towards the finish, Theory is hitting uh, LA Knight with a chop block, follows the forearm, calls for A Town. Down. Knight escapes that, hits a power slam. Well, Miz gets on the apron to distract LA Knight. LA Knight takes a swing at him, but Miz drops to the floor. Knight turns around, hits Theory with a DDT. Chases after the Miz, which was folly on L.A. Knight's part. Focus on what you got to do. So Miz runs into the ring. Knight follows. Miz takes a swing. Knight clotheslines Miz to the floor. And then Theory rolls up Knight with a handful of tights to get the win. Again, L.A. Knight shouldn't be chasing after the Miz when he's got a title, a potential title opportunity against uh, Austin Theory in the ring. So that one's on L.A. Knight. You can't blame the Miz 100% for that one. Um, after that, we got our first of at least two Thank You Edge video packages. A bunch of WB superstars, current, former. Uh, talk about Edge is meant to the company, to the business, to themselves personally. After that, we get an Edge career retrospective following uh, uh, his entire career in WWE. Um, his WWE productions are really well done. And, you know, if, if, if this was Edge's last match in WWE, like they treated the occasion as such with, with the respect that, that he's deserved given so much he has to this company. Um, afterwards we had EO and Bailey taking on Bianca and Charlotte. Um, of course, Bianca still nursing a bad D. And so that became a focal point during this bout. Uh, at one point, uh, Bianca gets a hot tag. She goes on a bit of a run. EO drop kicks Bianca in the bad knee and damage control then focuses their attack on Bianca's leg. So later on, uh, both Charlotte and Bianca end up getting pushed to the floor. So Charlotte's down there grabbing her ankle and Bianca grabbing her knee again. So then Bailey puts Charlotte back on the ring, covers her after pushing her off the top rope, gets it to Bailey tags in EO. She misses a moonsault, but hits Charlotte with a palm strike. She's looking for a spear. She misses. She runs to the post. Bailey tags in. She looks for a figure four on Charlotte. Instead, Charlotte punches her, tags in Bianca, and Bianca hits Bailey to get a KOD to get the win. 
Um, <clears throat> more on, on all of this later. So then we have another Thank You Edge video package. Like they had John Cena. I think he was in the first one. Apparently John Cena's coming back on SmackDown on September 1st. Uh, so then we got, uh, we're supposed to have an interview with Bianca backstage. Kathy Kelly's about to ask her a question. Instead, damage control attacks her with the chair before she can answer question. And then Bailey wraps the chair around Bianca's bad leg. EO blasts her with another chair, and the producers run in to break it up. So the plan is to write Bianca off for a stretch. Uh, then you have EO, I would guess, feuding with Asuka and Charlotte for the title until she, uh, Bianca comes back. Whether, you know, by herself, whether as part of this new faction with Lashley and Street Profits, we don't know. Um, but uh, I'm really interested to see if Bianca is off TV for a spell, What if they kind of change her character a little bit upon her return. Uh, then we get Street Profits with some new gear, awesome looking gear, um, versus the Good Brothers. Um, I was curious if they were going to do something to change their actual presentation. Uh, beyond their gear, but they had the same music. They had the same Tron. They had the solo cups. They had all that was the same. So, um, you know, maybe as this faction with Lashley kind of continues to, 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 to proceed, the three of them um, get more time together, work on their chemistry. Maybe we'll see a change in presentation with the Street Profits to match their new direction. You know, because as Organ Grinder here mentions in chat, asks, are they heels? I don't know if they're necessarily heels now. I think that the idea with this Lashley faction is, hey, let them do cool stuff. Stuff that'll get the crowd excited. Um, and, uh, you know, but it's, it's obviously a different direction for them. I don't know if it's necessarily a heel turn. It could be, but it's a different direction for their characters. And I was kind of curious if with new direction would come a new presentation, but it hasn't as of yet beyond the new gear, which looked really good. So uh, Street Profits get the win here. They got a new finisher. Um, uh, Dawkins hits a sky high. Ford hits a neck breaker. Uh, I believe it's Carl Anderson, as usual, who eats the pin here because that's what he does. Uh, and then Lashley comes to the stage to celebrate with the Street Profits. Uh, then we get a quick bloodline recap of what's happened since SummerSlam. Following that, we get this Paul Heyman interview, and Kayla asks him about the current state of the bloodline and, and the headspace of Roman Reigns. And Heyman's like, no, I'm not answering that. And then she asks about rumors backstage. And Heyman says, rumors? Are you going to ask me about rumors? What rumors are you, are you going to come at uh, come at me about? Rumors about Roman's cousin Jay Uso, Jay Uso, who abandoned WWE Universe, who quit the bloodline, who quit SmackDown, who quit WWE. You're going to ask me about rumors about Roman's family, his cousins. How about rumors about your family, Kayla? How's your mom? Good. Heard from her lately? I heard rumors about dad. Rumors about your cousins? No, you don't want to talk about rumors of your cousins. You want to talk about the cousin of my tribal chief. You don't even come here to ask me about Edge and his 25th anniversary. You don't ask me about Austin Theory and his victory over this, this wannabe, this flash of the pan LA night. No, you can't ask me about that. You want to ask me. And as he's about to continue, he looks down at his phone and he gets distracted by it. And he's like, hold on a second. He answers. And he says to whoever's on the other side of the phone, I'm doing a live interview with Kayla right now. Oh, all right. Okay. He's about to say thank you, but that he gets hung up on. So Kayla's like, will you care to share? And he says, matter of fact, I do. That's not a rumor. That's a fact. That's a spoiler. Jimmy Uso will be here live on SmackDown next week. I'd love to share my source, but even I wouldn't dare. So who is the source? Is it Jimmy? Is Jimmy calling him? Is it Roman? Is it Solo? Who is it? Who's the source? Speculate, please, in chat. Leave a comment. And then we got our main event, Sheamus versus Edge. They gave this match, I don't know, like 20, 25 minutes. Uh, tons of time. As you would expect from a Sheamus match, it was super physical. Um, you know, if, if Edge is, in fact, retiring after this match, he could still go. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and, and I guess given that Edge ended up getting the win here rather than going out on his back if this was his last bout. Uh, you know, it, it leaves open the possibility, I would imagine, for him to have further matches in WWE. But again, it remains to be seen. We don't know much now about what his future might hold. Um, but again, this match is really good. There's a point where Sheamus is hammering him with the 10 beats and then Edge foolishly turns around and talks some trash to Sheamus while Sheamus hits, hits him with a bunch more shots. Edge responds with a slap and a huge clothesline, sets up for a spear. Then Sheamus counters with a knee. 
Follows with a bro kick, but Edge kicks out. Sheamus sets up for another bro kick. Edge evades that. Rolls up Sheamus, gets a two count. Edge then hits Sheamus with a spear, but then Sheamus kicks out of that. Crowd's super into this match at this point. So then Sheamus is looking for another bro kick, and Edge manages, manages to sidestep and spear Sheamus at the same time to get the win. Crowd goes crazy, and Edge had a, a promo after the show went off the air just kind of saying, you know, I don't know what my future holds. Um, so we'll have to wait and see what the future holds for You Think You Know Me, Edge, Adam Copeland, Adam Edge, Edgy Adam. And uh, if he sticks around WB, goes to AEW, retires, who knows? Who knows? Uh, anyways, we also had Collision Saturday night. I know I'm just going through this. I mean, SmackDown was a really brisk show, even without the the bloodline. Um, you know, with the main event getting so much time, it was both both SmackDown and Collision felt really focused on on in ring action this week. Um, you know, apart from the Waller effect, the open SmackDown there wasn't extended talky bits really on either show. Um, and you know, both shows kind of felt like they they kind of flew by. Anyways, we had Collision. So, I wish Steve was here because I'd like to have this conversation with him. If CM Punk was going to attempt to uh, a bit of subterfuge with Joe, why not wait until after the bell rings so you get this match and humiliate him? I get why in terms of the story, but in terms of CM Punk, really wanting to stick it to Joe. Or somehow utilizing that same strategy at all in. And he just humiliate Joe. Not that I want to see Joe humiliate. He's one of my favorites. But at least wait till the bell rings. You got yourself an easy W, Golden Vampire. You'd be 1-0 in AEW. Top of the power rankings there. So anyways, CM Punk uh, attacks Joe before the bell. Disguised as Golden Vampire. Corner knee. GTS. Uh, and then takes the mask off. And CM Punk and he accepts Joe's challenge for all in. And uh, uh, we kind of knew this match was going to happen because it seems like one of the four or five marquee b- bouts for the card. Um, between that and then uh, later on, Ricky Starks had a interview with Tony Schiavone, and they kind of correct the length of his suspension. It's not 30 days, it's 28 days. and He's already two weeks through that, so I think there's a possibility that he could be ready for all out. So I guess the possibility exists where Punk, assuming he successfully retains, whether he actually beats Joe or just for whatever reason, uh, walks out of All In still with that real world title, faces Ricky Starks at All Out in Chicago for the real world's title. And one way or the other, we're going to get a decisive winner, I think. No roll-ups. Someone's hitting their finish to probably Phil. Um, and, 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 Phil will continue on with that real world's title for a while until there's probably unification bout at some juncture, if there is, unless they're kind of going to do a thing where Dynamite has a world title, Collision has their world title. And, you know, until they kind of, until they can work out some peace accord between CM Punk and the Elite, those titles are staying separate. Now, if there's an occasion happens where they can all work things out, maybe at that juncture they'll have a title unification. So then you can comfortably have the world champion appear on. On, on, on both shows per chance. I don't know. And that's assuming the, 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 the AEW champion is CM Punk, Kenny Omega, or Hangman Page. But that remains to be seen. Uh, also on Collision, this is very exciting. This is a feud Steve and I have been uh, been asking for for a long time, and I think we're, it seems like we're finally getting it, and I hope, I hope, I hope they give this feud a lot of time, let it last months, let them do a lot of cool stuff, in terms of destroying things while also dropping awesome promos. I'm talking about Miro and Hobbs. You have Miro drop it like the promo on Saturday was fantastic. You have Hobbs drop awesome promos. While they're doing that, you book the feud kind of like Braun and Roman, where it's just massive destruction everywhere. Regardless of who wins or loses this feud, if you book it like that, they're both coming out of this looking great. Like forces. Uh, and I think that's what we want to see. Um, so Miro challenged Hobbs for a match at All Out. Uh, I can't wait. Again, let them feud through the end of the year. Just have them do awesome stuff. And people are really going to get on board with it. Uh, this episode of, of Collision was also heavy on Bang Bang Gang. 
So if you're not into Bullet Club Gold, this episode of Collision wasn't for you. I am into Bang Bang Gang, so I was I was I was pretty entertained by the whole thing. Jay White defeated Dalton Castles, great Dalton Castles on AEW television because he's awesome. Um, and then following that, uh, the Guns, Juice Robinson, they want a challenger. So uh, Iron Savage has come out, have a match with them. They win that. I mean, that whole block of Bullet Club Gold action took up like I don't know quarter, two thirds of the show, a good chunk of the first hour. Um, and you can just tell those guys are having so much fun coming up with material together, and it really it really translates on screen, especially Juice just being an absolute maniac out there, an absolute maniac out there. Uh, we also got a fun match between Willow Nightingale and Diamante, um, furthering this kind of feud going on, on right now for the TBS title um, between Statlander, Mercedes, Willow, and Diamante. Not exactly sure how it's going to play out leading into All Out, so I'm guessing that's when the match is going to happen. Um, remains to be seen there. Tony Storm had another great interview. She's really hitting it out of the park with this, this you know, uh, Hollywood actress from the 1940s or 50s gimmick that she's got right now and it's so good it's so good uh main event we had darby versus christian so christian's been touting himself as tnt champ except when it comes time to defend the title then he, then luchasaurus is the champion um so uh it seems like going into all out the match that darby will actually challenge for the tnt title presumably against luchasaurus it's going to be the thing where he's going to be beat up again because he got beat up here He's going to get beat up at all in in the casket match. And I think he had, yeah, they have a tag match. He and Nick Wayne have a tag match on Dynamite this week. So he'll probably get beat up there. So he's going to be beat up going into all out. And at this juncture, I don't know if he's going to win. But although if he does, and if he, if he sneaks out a win, beats Luchasaurus for that TNT title, I'm hoping that means, hoping. That means shortly thereafter, Swerve's going to challenge for that title. And he's going to be next TNT champion. We'll see if that happens. Anyways, Collision kicked off with the customary uh, show open promos. Short ones. We got one from Christian, from Darby, from Bang Bang Gang, from Dalton Castle and Samoa Joe. You got to have Dalton Castle on TV more. Wildly entertaining. So the first match of the night was going to be Samoa Joe against, uh, uh, I, I would imagine, Golden Vampires probably on a Tier 1 deal with AEW. Um, but it's Joe versus Golden Vampire. So before the bell even rings, Golden Vampire goes out and attacks Joe. whoop Shoves the ref. It's before the bell rings, so I don't know if the ref can technically DQ Golden Vampire. So then hits a running knee in the corner, and then not the prettiest GTS, uh, but the, 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 the reveal of, of Golden Vampire as Punk was pretty smooth. As soon as the GTS is hit, mask is off, and it's Phil. CM Punk, so he grabs a mic and says to Joe, I accept, bitch. So that match is on. That should be really good. It should be really good. Then we get a video package for uh, All In, the history of All In. And a hype package for this year's All In. Then we get Guns Up, everybody. Bang, bang, gang. Jay White taking on Dalton Castle. Uh, this was a, a, a... They gave this match a decent amount of time. Dalton Castle is wildly entertaining. Wildly entertaining. Um, the boys got involved to help out Dalton Castle for a bit, but in the end... Sleeper suplex, Blade Runner from Jay White gets the win for himself. And Bang Bang Gang afterwards, we get an interview. Uh, Jay says, Tony, we talk about what we want to talk about. So first, guns up from our Lexington Gold members. It seems like every week there's a little hint that Bullet Club Gold might either be like an upper tier of a credit card or a gentleman's club. Anyway, so he takes the mic from Shivani and says, I'll take that from you, Tony. What I want to talk about, I got a message for my old friend Kenny Omega in his hospital bed. So, Kenny, I hope you're paying attention because if so-called God of pro wrestling doesn't want to be exposed at the biggest pro wrestling event of all time at Wembley Stadium, then I think, Mr. Omega, you better stay in that bed. You see, we've known you for almost a decade, myself and Juice, and we've had to sit by for too long whilst you and your friends deceive the entire pro wrestling world. Kenny and his friends have deceived you uh, all into thinking that the elite are the peak of Bullet Club. But, Tony, we're here to set the record straight. In London, at All In, Bullet Club Gold, Bang Bang Gang, show that they are a cut above the elite. doesn't matter who Kenny brings with them. doesn't matter which friends you bring, Kota Bushi, Hangman Adam Page. It doesn't matter. We beat them before, and we'll beat them again. So at least Jay White's trying to set up some stakes for this match. 
which seemingly was put together somewhat haphazardly uh, after Don Callis, I would imagine, paid Bang Bang Gang to beat down Omega and Dynamite. But at least Jay White's saying, hey, this is to, to show everybody who's prime Bullet Club now. So anyways, Jay hands the mic off to Juice Robinson, I believe. He says, Hangman, I heard what you said. You think it's funny that we drove from Orlando to Jacksonville to beat the crap out of Kenny Omega? You think it was a little two-minute beatdown? Well, it took us two minutes to put the great Kenny Omega into the hospital. So what do you think we're going to do to you at the biggest pro wrestling show ever, you idiot? Next are the guns. And Colton says, hey, Young Bucks, you know you had to cheat to beat us because we're the best brother tag team in AEW. Instead of giving us a rematch, you grabbed your friend Kenny. So the crowd's chanting, ass boys. And Austin says, well, guess what, Kenny? We have friends, too, and ours are way juicier, way more rock hard, and way more elite-er than you. And Colton continues, you guys may have started this company, but now we run it. The Bang Bang Gang. So Austin continues, Tony, you wanted to get warmed up tonight. Uh, you saw Jay Russell, Tony Khan, send us three out before Fighter Fest right now because they want to have a match, get warmed up. So that brings out Iron Savages and Jack Jameson. They accept Bullet Club Gold's challenge and we get that match next the guns juice rubs had taken on iron savages and eventually jay white gets to join commentary with card blade this the introdu- introduction of card blade to the whole bang bang gang thing is so simple but it's it's like one thing they can all get behind and have fun with and it just shows so much these guys are just having an absolute it's like they're having a delight working with each other and it's so awesome to see because it, it, it translates on screen so uh, this match was fairly competitive for a spell in the end. Bang, bang, gang. Guns up. Get the win. Uh, Juice hits Jameson with a leg lariat. Falls with the finisher. Get the win. And then Jay White and Cardblade get in the ring to celebrate with the rest of Bang, bang, gang. After that, we got a House of Black video package. I mean, it seems like uh, House of Black is done with Andrade. Even though it didn't seem like that four weeks ago. They're just focusing on Billy. Maybe after House of Black drops those trio titles to the acclaimed, it probably all out because Billy returns. Then maybe Malachi's like, oh, I was supposed to continue this feud with Andrade. Slipped my mind for a bit. Now I'm not, now I'm not worried about Billy Gunn's boots anymore. Maybe now I can feud, finish this feud with Andrade. Anyways, Malachi said this. Definition of the word funeral means to observe a dead person before burial. Sumerians believed that the afterlife was a dark cavern deep below the ground where inhabitants were believed to continue a shadowy version of whatever life they had on Earth. That's what you were doing, Billy, living a shadow of what you once were. But like all things that do not know, they have, he just goes on about uh, all that. Uh, anyways, he said, here lies Billy Gunn, a man of nothing but a father of immorality and lies, rest in pain. So he's calling out Billy Gunn, which concerning their seven match with the claim, just strategically Malachi, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I know you already beat him twice. You pinned him twice. This is bulletin board material here for Billy Gunn. This is what he posts up in his locker if he wants to get motivated for another match with House of, House of Black. This is what you're doing here, Malachi. Don't know if it's going to work out for you this time. Uh, next, we had this video package where Roosh calls up Jose, and Jose's like, Roosh wanted me to videotape this uh, conversation, but I don't know why. So Roosh calls. He's upset that Vance and Drillistico lost to Hook and Jungle Boy way back before Jungle Boy turned heel. And so he says, I, I, I want LFI to go to Mexico, essentially so I can train them up, so they can be good. So then Drillistico picks up Vance at the airport. They go out drinking. The, uh, Vance looks like he's totally inebriated. As they're leaving the bar, a van drives up. A couple guys get out, kidnap Vance. And Jose is in the background observing it all. So I'm guessing this is just a means by Rouge to try to toughen up Preston Vance a little bit in his estimation. We'll see where it goes. Uh, after that, we got a Ricky Starks interview. Um, he says, might, might I add that you were wrong last week. You told everybody I was suspended for 30 days. And Tony Schiavone goes, ah, my bad. It's 28 days. Stark says, and I've already served half that. I feel like this is a, all a big joke to me. I feel like AEW is actually a nonprofit organization. We got... P- People like you making mistakes left and right, and I'm the only one. I'm the one that has to suffer for it. My rage, my anger is not out of nothing. It all comes from this type of stuff. Last week I said I was going to bring a word to AEW. I meant every single word of it. Tonight, for those in attendance and everyone watching at home, I am I'm going to bring chaos. And the camera pans over as Big Bill walks in the frame. And Starks continues, "I'm going to do it live tonight. 
So Big Bill walks off. Ricky follows. And we get to been saying for months, we need more Ricky Stark shorts films. This guy has a fantastic eye. I don't know if he's lighting this stuff himself. I don't know if he's... What? What? These things are beautiful. This guy has a future directing movies whenever his wrestling career comes to the end. Um, he did a couple of these, one of which I remember distinctly that he did, I think back when he was in the NWA, that was like a little mini Kubrick movie. It was awesome. It, it, it was, and this one, this one had more of like, I saw the jokes about it and they're not that far off base. Um, on, uh, like a, like a perfume or a cologne ad. Um, but man, like the lighting, the staging, the framing of the shots, it's all really, really good. And he said on Twitter, I, or yeah, on Twitter, I think that he directed and produced this whole thing. So, I mean, hats off to Ricky Starks. Dude's a talented guy. Super talented guy. Um, so then we got Big Bill uh, versus uh, local enhancement talent Derek Neal. As you'd imagine, this match did not last long. Big Bill gets the win with a choke slam. And afterwards, Starks gets in the ring. It's like, hey, Bill, bring bring Derek closer to the center of the ring. So he does, and Starks gets steam belts, Steamboat's belt, starts h- hitting Derek Neal with it. And then Stark tells uh, Bill to dump Neil out of the ring, and he does, and they just both pose in the corner. Um, then we get a video recap of Darby and Sting ambushing A.R. Fox at his wrestling school. This happened, I th- think, late last week, I want to say. A couple days before a collision happened. Um, and then we get Wi- uh, Willow taking on Diamante. Uh one point early in the match, Mar- Mercedes Martinez comes to ringside to help her friend Diamante out. Uh, the finish saw Willow looking for a doctor bomb. Diamante reverses that into a roll-up, but Willow kicks out. Willow drives Diamante into the corner, puts her on the top turnbuckle. Diamante escapes that. She's looking for a power bomb off the top. However, Willow escapes, hits a missile drop kick, and then uh, Mercedes pulls Diamante out of the ring. So this brings out Chris Statlander. She runs to ringside, lays out Mercedes, suplexes her on the ramp, and then Willow hits a massive pounce, huge pounce on Diamante, almost sends her into the barricade. She puts Diamante back in the ring, hits a doctor bomb to get the win. I'm not sure how this is all going to play out for that TBS title at All Out, which is when I'm assuming the title match will happen. Whether it's going to be, I mean, they can't, I, I doubt they do a tag match. They got to have that, you'd think, have that title defended. So I don't know if it's going to be Mercedes and Statlander, if it's going to be a four way deal. I don't know. I honestly don't know. But, I mean, they're trying to tell a story here on Collision. And yeah, the matches have been great so far. So uh, After that, we had Young Bucks FTR video package. So much for the advertised appearance by FTR last night. It's probably for the best, uh, given the circumstances. Um, so they just did a video package instead. It seems like the match is still on. Um, you know, I guess if, if none of Cash Wheeler's legal woes are going to preclude him from traveling to the United Kingdom. I guess technically the match could still happen. Um, after that, Tony Storm interview. Great stuff. This new character Tony has has discovered um, is fantastic. And I'm eager to see what happens with this character after All In when probably Soraya, wins, Soraya or Sheeta wins the match. So she's uh, talking to Lexi. And Tony says, I don't know who you are, but the last girl who interviewed me was very, very rude. That was Lexi last week. Lexi interviewed her last week. Tony continues, yes, there, there will be a preview next week, a preview like you've never seen before. And after that, Sheeta and Baker, they won't even make it to Wembley Stadium because there's a tag match on Dynamite, I believe. And then Lexi asks if she's confident that Soraya will have her back at all in. And Tony says, listen, I know you're new here, but don't ever question the friendship of the outcasts. We're a sisterhood. We're a force. And they've had my back since day one. At Wembley, I'll be elevated to the spotlight that I ov- I've always deserved when I become the first ever three-time AEW Women's Champion. Maybe be a bit more prepared next time and wipe that dreadful look off your face. And so she leaves. And Lexi says, all right, back to you, a commentary. And once again, Tony throws her shoe at her. It's fantastic stuff. Uh, next, Powerhouse Hobbs. Uh, taken on uh, Deadlock Pro Wrestling Zone, one half of Violence is Forever, I think it's the tag team, uh, Kevin Koo. Uh, Hobbs wins this pretty quickly. Uh, hits the belly to back off the top, a bunch of clothesline, spine buster to get the win, but after the match, uh, stomps, sorry, Hobbs stomps on 
Kevin's back, puts him in game over. And commentary is like, oh, Miro's not here. What can Miro do in response to this? Well, Miro shows up on the Tron and says, Hobbs, we have a lot in common. I'm not just talking about our muscles. I too used to rely on a book for guidance. I too used to surround myself with distractions. But now the Redeemer walks alone, no matter, no matter how much it breaks, my heart breaks for her. Even when my puny God tries to push me down, shrinks me to nothing because I won't kneel for that fool. But Hobbs, I'm not here to feud with my God. I am here to replace him. Gosh, that's good stuff. You talk about redemption at All Out. Redemption is coming for you and it's going to piss on your cold, dead body. I am godless, but I know you are not because you pray to me now. Miro's so good. I can't wait. I, God, I just hope they, not get my hopes up, but I hope they do this feud justice and let them develop some interesting character stuff, let them drop some awesome promos, and let them destroy a lot of stuff. I mean, that's, that's what this feud should be. I hope it happens. I'm not getting my hopes up, but I'm, I hope that's what happens. After that, we have an MJF, Adam Cole, Bebe recap about their story. And we have our main event, Darby Allen versus a uh, future going in Raw Hall of Famer, Christian Cage. TNT title, not on the line. So uh, Swerve and AR Fox are watching the match backstage. And early on, Christian does this great bit where he's got control of the match and he goes to the timekeeper area and gets the TNT title and places it in the corner. And he stands on the floor and he's like leaning on the apron, taunting Darby to come and reach for the TNT title. And Darby's crawling over there. And Roddy's about to reach out and grab the title. Christian punches him. It's fantastic. So Darby starts a bit of a comeback there. Uh, down towards the finish, Darby sits Christian on a chair on the floor. The match goes down to the floor and they go back and forth a bit. He has a drop kick off the top rope. I don't know how Darby does this stuff to himself. He missed a coffin drop on the apron too. That looked brutal. Which happened next, actually. Um, uh, Luchasaurus pulls Christian off the apron, so Darby just eats all apron on the coffin drop. Um, and so the ref sees that and tosses Luchasaurus from ringside. So while Luchasaurus is arguing with the ref about being ejected from ringside, Christian hits Darby with a TNT title. Dar- I mean, Christian is, is a vet. He should know this. He doesn't get Darby far enough away from the rope, so when he covers, Darby is able to get his foot on the bottom rope. So Christian's looking for a spear. Darby sidesteps that, hits a shotgun drop kick, puts Christian on the top. Christian, though, counters with a sunset flip powerbomb, then a spear. Darby kicks out of that. So Christian's looking for a kill switch. Darby, though, reverses that into a jackknife cover to get the win. And so Shivani comes to the ring and says, hey, we're going to have an interview with Darby Allen. Before he can finish asking the question, Luchasaurus comes back down to ringside to distract Darby so that Christian can uh, hit Darby with the TNT title from behind. And Luchasaurus gets the ring, hits Christian with, or sorry, Darby with a choke slam, and then Christian gets down to cover him. And both he and Luchasaurus say, Shivani, get down here and cover this and count this pin. Get down here. So Shivani is getting bullied all over the place on collision, gets down, counts the pinfall, and announces Christian as the winner. It was a really fun main event. Uh, Darby just throwing his body around all over the place. But it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. All right, now that uh, we got through those, let us uh, answer some questions. We'll do a raw preview. No celebrity uh, impersonator today. Sorry, everybody. Steve, uh, you know, reaches out to them, contacts them, arranges for their appearances on the show. Uh, I have nothing to do with that, and I'm trying to keep it that way. So it's just going to be me, raw preview. Um, So uh, apologies, I guess. Let's answer some questions, though, first. Uh, Blake Whitehouse, other than the pandemic, what made Edge's comeback feel like a little bit of a letdown? (sighs) You know, when when he had that, when he won the Rumble and had the feud with Roman and they had to get Daniel Bryan involved just so the fans would be excited about it, it just seemed like the fans at first were into the idea of Edge back as nostalgia act, but that only lasted so long. Maybe it was that hour-long WrestleMania match that he and Randy Orton had. I don't know, the year prior. It just seemed like, regardless, it, it seemed like people were excited, oh, Edge is back. The prospect of Edge being back, but then when he was back, it was like, all right, well, he's back. And it just, I don't know, beyond the immediate maybe excitement of it, it didn't really, didn't really feel like it led anywhere. Um, he had some good matches. I thought the match he and Roman had at uh, 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 Money in the Bank after that WrestleMania was really good. And they were setting up, if they want to tell the story of Edge being the guy to take the belt off Roman, they could have done it. 
When he turned heel with Judgment Day, that was a huge error. It did him no favors. It set Judgment Day up to to be something after he left. But it was just, I don't know, it was ill-conceived heel turn. It just didn't necessarily seem like anything he was doing felt. I mean, FTW Assassin here brings up the Edge Seth feud, and that was good. That had some good stuff. Beyond that, didn't really feel like Edge was doing anything really vital after he came back, definitely after he won the Rumble. Whereas Christian right now, feels like everything he's doing is vital. I mean, he's kind of holding down collision right now. Um, let's see here. Uh, this golfing goon, when the time comes for Cody Rhodes to retire, what would you guys like to see his last feud match be? I mean, Seth makes a lot of sense. Given his current tenure in WWE, that's kind of his primary rival. Uh, I don't know how much longer or if, if Randy Orton's going to return. Given their history, it would make a lot of sense for them to feud at some juncture. Um, you know, maybe if they can get Kenny Omega to, to, to come to WB before his uh, career is over. That, 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 that could be a possibility. Uh, Nikhil here says, Julia said that she is not done defending the strong women's title in the U.S. She's challenging any woman from any promotion to challenge her. With that in mind, what dream match should Julia have next? Mercedes Monet. Like to see that. Like to see Julia versus, uh, gosh, there's, uh, uh, Jamie Hayter, uh, Jade Cargill, um, Asuka, um, EO, Bailey, uh, Jordan Grace, uh, Mosh Slamovich. I can go on and on. Um, this is a good question from Andre Zimple. How would you package a wrestler around a theme whose theme is at the mall by plus crier? Well, obviously they would go to each city, go to the, the that city's finest shopping establishment and, um, and go and procure themselves some merchandise from said establishments and then show up on that particular wrestling show, whether it be raw SmackDown, whatever, and I talk about, while they got a lot of stuff at this mall, it's not the best mall. So then they talk crap about the city by talking crap about their mall. I guess. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Cursed Hawk says, after watching a few hours of Bret Hart compilations of him saying how bad other wrestlers were because they never drew money, it got me thinking, when Bret was the face of the company, was in the midst of one of WWE's stretches getting dismantled by WB, so that bears a question. Was Brett ever a draw? So here's my understanding. Brett was wildly popular outside of the United States. Um, like, I guess, you know, that there, there's that uh, episode of something to wrestle with we talk about all the time about WrestleMania 9, where Hogan was supposed to go on this European tour, even though he wasn't advertised for it. And that's why they put the belt back on him. But part of that conversation was, how popular Brett was in Europe. Um, I mean, the wrestling business kind of overall stunk in the early 90s, just across the board. Just business wasn't what it used to be. It stunk. WCW is losing tons of money. WWE wasn't doing terribly well. Like even Diesel was champion. The company wasn't in the best financial condition. I think part of it was a lull in the wrestling business after the peak of the Hogan years. And I don't know. I mean, you come off Hogan who as a performer is, is, you know, he's as, as, as a wrestling performer, he's on a lot of, not mine, but a lot of people's Mount Rushmore, you know, he's the guy that Vince found to bring wrestling to national prominence. Like it never been before. And we haven't seen a whole lot of those type performers in the history of wrestling. Even just since Hogan, we can count on it's rock it's stone cold. Cena, that's it in the 40 years since. Um, and so it's natural when you go from the peak of the rock and wrestling era that there's going to be a lull afterwards. And I'm not saying that it's necessarily anything to do with the talent kind of at the top of the company. Look, I'm not the hugest Bret Hart fan. I respect what he did as an in-ring performer. Um, 
but you know, I never really thought that Vince saw him as the guy, as the face of the company. He was he was kind of a stopgap between other people that Vince wanted to be the face of the company. You know, between Hogan and then Diesel and then Sean. Um, and then eventually Stone Cold. V- Brett was just the guy who's like, you're reliable. I know people like you enough that they'll get behind you, but I'm not going to market my company around you. Uh, Luis asks, how does this SmackDown feel with no bloodline on it? Longer, shorter? I, th- I thought with the the focus on in- in-ring action that it, it breezed by pretty quick. I didn't think any of the matches overstayed their welcome. Um, and the prospect of seeing Edge's last match on network television I, I thought was, was pretty solid. Jack Napier says, who is a wrestler that you like a lot but don't like their finisher? Jack says, Cody and the Crossroads. That's a good answer. I love Okada. He's one of my favorite wrestlers. And I don't dislike the Rainmaker. They just book it so weak. They book it really weak. It takes like three or four for him to win a main event match with the Rainmaker. I mean, it's it's it's, it's a short-arm clothesline, you know? So it's... I mean, any, any move can be a finish if it's booked effectively. But at this juncture, it takes so many for him to win a main event match. Um, It's... Uh, it's hard to take it too seriously. Uh, Edward here asks, what's your guy's favorite football or your football team of choice? Says we give off Raider Nation vibes. Uh, no, I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan. You know, I've never been to the city of Philadelphia. Uh, let's go to the YouTube. Uh, Strife here asks, if you're Triple H, what's your pitch to Osprey when he becomes a free agent? I would say, um, uh, I'd give the same pitch that, I don't know if this is the pitch he gave Gunther, but that'd be, I'd say to him, this could be your career path because Osprey's voice uh, concerns are, are about wanting to move to America and that he doesn't want to do it. Um, so I'd say, all right, we're going to we're gonna fire up NXT Europe. Will Osprey, you're going to be the centerpiece of this uh, uh, new promotion we're starting here. Um, you get a wrestle uh, more, more uh, at home. And, you know, give it a try. If you like it, if you like the organization, the WB structure, the WB uh, kind of uh, corporate philosophy, doors always open for you to uh, come to the States and wrestle. Um, you got to you gotta write Osprey a huge check, though, probably to leave New Japan to wrestle for NXT Europe, which is probably just going to be on Peacock or something. So it's going to make a serious investment. But if, if the plan is, here, we're going to write you a massive check to come be the guy in this up this new promotion we're starting it, with the hope that you'll like the organization and you'll want to move up in it, I don't know what else pitch you make to him. Uh, Carlos Diaz just says, one Batista movie, one Cena movie, one Kevin Nash movie. I'll top my head, Batista, uh, Blade Runner 2049. John Cena, um, Suicide Squad, and Kevin Nash, uh, Punisher. Uh, Jay Butler asks, Larson, you're a shoe guy. Jordan 1s or Jordan 11, which one are you choosing? I've actually never owned a pair of Jordan 11s, though they're on my on my list. Jordan 1s take a lot of breaking in time to get comfortable. And I've heard, I think Jordan said his favorite Jordans are Jordan 11. So, um I would I, I once I try those I'll I'll give you I'll have a better idea. Uh, before we get to raw preview, uh, floppy says top three directors your favorite movies by them. Goodness gracious, uh, Kubrick is probably Clockwork Orange. Scorsese is probably I'll say Goodfellas today. Although it could be it could be uh, Taxi Driver or or another one of his movies third favorite my goodness I mean for a while it was Paul Thomas Anderson and his his boogie nights so that'll that'll be my answer for now anyways let's go to the raw preview I think there's three segments announced yes again no celebrity impersonator not my deal that's Steve's deal I like doing these myself so ooh this is exciting Chad Gable looks to shoosh Gunther's Intercontinental title reign tonight. They give they gotta give this match 25 minutes, make it the main event. Have Gable look like an absolute star even though he loses. So then if they want to consider Chad Gable as a guy down the line to beat Gunther's title reign, record title reign at that juncture, you could do it. But after this match, if that's gonna happen, Chad Gable has to go on a serious winning streak. 
like not lose for four or five, six months. Like this should be the <laughs> kick in the pants he needs to go on a winning streak anyways. New Day go head to head with Drew McIntyre and Matt Riddle. So the question is here, if New Day wins, is Drew McIntyre going to claim more of the shit out of Matt Riddle? Is he going to turn on Matt Riddle here? It's a possibility. Matt Riddle's taking this L. Finally, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura to reveal what he told Seth freaking Rollins. So this ain't going to be a mystery like who threw the pie at Kevin Owens or what did Triple H say to Kevin Owens before he helped him win the universal title. We're going to, fi- in theory, find out what he says. I wonder what it's going to be. Speculate in the comments below. Please and thank you. Anyways, that's going to do it for us. Uh, thanks for joining me, everybody. Um, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow with our Raw recap. Maybe some more news on you think you know him. Edge, where is he going to go? Maybe. We'll find out. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one. Goodbye.